Let me know if everybody can see the screen. We're, sh we're looking at BA. And again, if you're here and you don't know how to chat, um, then you have to go down to two individual user, choose my name, Melissa Armo, and then type. That's the way that you will be able to communicate to me. Everybody know how to do that? Hello, is anyone there? Hello, 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 hello. No one's typing. Either no one can hear me or no one knows how to do it. Okay, there's one person, Joe. There's two people. Lou can hear. Very good. <coughs> Excellent. Well, today we're going to talk just with charts up. I don't have a PowerPoint up, so if you have any questions after today, I'm just going to put my email in the room. You can email me here. At Melissa at the stock swoosh .com. If you have questions after today, or if in fact you are interested in learning my strategy and taking my class. Today we're going to talk about how to earn a living trading in 2024. Just a couple of days into the year, and guess what? Markets have already been very volatile in just these few days. The number one thing, though, that I want to emphasize with today's lecture, and I'm probably going to talk for about a half an hour today, give or take questions. If you have questions, type them in the room as we're going along. <coughs> Excuse me. And as I said, you can always email me questions later at melissa at thestockswish.com. But again, the number one thing that I want to communicate to people today is that you must have a strategy and something that you apply every day to make trading choices in order to earn a living trading. If you're trading on this side and you say, I don't really want to do this full time, Melissa, I have another job or I'm retired or I just want to do it a little bit here or there. The stock market is very unforgiving. Whether you spend six and a half hours a day trading, which is Monday through Friday, five days a week, or 30 minutes a day trading, or even less than that, five days a week, the market's very unforgiving. It doesn't matter how many hours you spend trading a week. You have to know what to do. So again, you have to have a strategy that you use and implement every day in the market to be successful even if you're only going to trade one day a week, even if you're only going to do one trade a month, okay? Because again, the market is set up as a place where people invest money, they buy, they sell, they short, <laughs> people go long. But at the end of the day, not everybody makes money in the market. Many, many people are in the market and struggle to be profitable. So the whole concept or idea of trading for a living where you could actually supplement income, pulling money from the market, where you could actually do this full time and not have a full time job, is something that a lot of people dream of, but they never really get serious about doing it because they're all over the place usually with all kinds of different strategies, ideas, flipping from one thing to another. I started trading in 2008 and I made a lot of money. The first trade I ever did that I made a lot of money, which was over $1,000. It was in a one minute chart. It was a short. It wasn't a gap. And we're going to talk about gaps today. It was a Netflix. I'll never forget it. I didn't risk so much money. At that time, my average risk was about $150 a trade. And I made over $1,000 in a couple of minutes. And my risk was like $150. And again, it was a short. So ever since then, I decided to focus on shorting. So number one, you need a strategy in order to be successful trading for a living. Number two, you also have to have some kind of edge. For me, my edge really is shorting. Why? Most traders prefer to go long. It will always be that way. It's always been that way. And I didn't know that when I started, but I very quickly found out. So shorting actually gives me an edge. And again, if you're looking for some kind of edge, it might be mine. You could decide to make shorting your edge too. 
The third thing that you need to be successful trading for a living is you need to have a skill, an actual skill that you learn that you can implement in the market every day. You say, well, I'm really good at doing this, Melissa. I'm really good at holding. Or I'm really good at seeing the target. I'm really good at entering in the one minute where I'm really good at doing the options or whatever that is, okay? So you gotta learn the skill. Then you've gotta set your sizing up. You say, okay, well, if I wanna make this much money per week, this much money per month, this much money per year, how much on average do I have to risk per train? And I'm usually looking to make one to one. So if I'm risking a thousand, I'm looking to make a thousand. If you wanna risk 500, you're looking to make 500. That's good results, okay? And then number five, we talked about learning a skill. You have to master that skill. Got to get really, really good at that, whatever you're doing. Again, for me, it's trading on the one-minute chart, trading gaps, shorting, the fast Ooh. trades, which we're going to talk about. And then number six is adding size. Adding size to your trades where you can make a lot of money because you have a lot of size in your trades. Again, that's how you can all of a sudden go from, hold on one second. Let me just, let me just turn this sound off here because we're getting the sound of people coming in and out. You're adding size to a trade and then you can whop it on and that's how you can grow and go from making $1,000 a week to $2,000 a week to $3,000 a week and so on and so forth. So again, you have to take it step by step if you want to be successful. And for some of the people that just plopped in here, again, I'm talking today about gaps. I'm talking today about trading for a living. If you have questions, you can write it in the room. You have to go down to two, individual user, choose my name, Alyssa Armo, and then write your question in the room, okay? And again, if you have questions afterwards, you can go to Melissa at thestockswoosh.com. So anyways, as I was saying, the most important thing is getting the right strategy. So some of you I recognize I've seen your names before. Some of you are new. And I don't know if you know what I do. But if you don't know what I do, my strategy is based on stocks gapping. Now I will also trade the market. In fact, let's go to the market. Let's go look at the market here. So I'm going to go back. This is the cues. We started out the calendar year 2024 with a gap down, okay? So I get up in the morning and I'm looking for the gap. Then I rate the gap using a system that I created. If you want to learn that system, you would sign up for my class and you would learn it from me. It's a class I teach once a month. Again, my process is that I apply this strategy every day. What's the reason that I do that? Instead of going willy-nilly looking at everything. One of the reasons, again, I talked about this on TV yesterday, why you can't just trade the news and say, oh, the economic data was good, let's go long, or the economic data was bad, let's short, or vice versa, is because the market necessarily doesn't really care about that or doesn't even always go in the way that you think. So reading the price action is extremely important. And when I say price action, I mean, looking at the bulls and the bears, okay? Now, I break it down because I'm trying to read what's happening in the gap. I'm never, ever going long a bearish gap, and I'm never shorting a bullish gap. It doesn't mean that I short every bearish gap. It doesn't mean I go long every bullish gap. But again, I'm never doing the opposite, okay? So my strategy is something that I apply every day so that I can stay focused on finding the right pick. We'll go back and look at BA in a minute because the play of the day today was BA. We shorted it. It worked. But here we're looking at the market and how the market started out for 2024. It started out in a gap down. So let's go back, take it back. What is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So the market, the stock market, we're looking at the Qs on 1229. It was the last trading day of the year in 2023. Closed at 409.52, okay? Opened down to start the calendar year at 405.84. And actually, we fell. And we fell, 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 fell. In fact, we fell all the way down Friday's low. We broke 400. It was 395.34. 
And that was the first full week of 2023. Now, today is Tuesday. We gapped down today and rallied. Yesterday, we gapped up and rallied. We had two green days here this week so far. But anyways, just to go back and explain what a gap is, a gap is the difference between the close and the open. And we had a gap here, 1229212. Everybody see that? And again, any questions, plop it in the room. Okay. So when you're looking to trade anything, anything at all, if you're willy-nilly back and forth, like 50-50 crapshoot, trying to decide what to trade, you're going to have a really, really hard time having consistency in your trades. I'm sure anybody that's ever traded, if you're here, if you're active, if you're trading the market, has made money in the market in trades. But it doesn't mean you're consistent. When someone makes money in a trade, they really get sucked in very easily. Oh my God, this is so easy. I didn't even have to do anything. Blue. And they make money. But then people very often lose, 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 give back the profits they made, and then so much more because they really didn't have a consistent strategy to implement and apply every single day in the market. So again, getting back to what I was saying, it's the number one takeaway from today is that in order to earn a living trading, you have to have the strategy. It has to work, obviously. You have to know how to use it, obviously. Has to set up almost every single solitary day, okay? Because you need the opportunities on a consistent basis weekly to be able to profit. And then again, you have to have more winners than losers using that strategy. But it's just one of these things and I've known this now for teaching people for so long where they're very often not set, not structured, not focused enough on one set strategy. And that's just so, so important here because again, if you're not, let me go over here to BA, you're going to have a hard time finding the consistency with what you're doing. Any questions before I talk about the next chart here from anybody? Again, I see some new faces here. I see some faces I've seen before. If you want to ask a question, you have to go down to two. Then you have to choose individual user. Then you choose my name, Melissa Armo, and then you type. Vivian is asking, how much does it have to gap down? Do, I, it doesn't matter, Vivian. That's the whole thing. It's not just looking at percentages. If my system was so simple to apply by looking at a percentage, I could program it into a black box or computer and I could close my eyes and make money without having to do anything. So it's not about a certain percentage. In fact, I don't use percentages at all in my decision making. There are times that I will short a gap down that's a baby. There are times I'll short a gap down that's what you might consider enormous. So it's not, a, and they both work actually. So it's not about percentages. Again, that's, that's an interesting question, Vivian, because many, 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 many people want to be very black and white with their trading, meaning let's just look at one thing, percentage, or let's just look at this, or let's just look at that, no. So again, if you come and decide you want to take my class, it's a paid class that I do once a month. The class for January isn't until the end of this month. Again, if you're interested in that, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. But I look at 26 points on a chart to determine what to do. And a percentage isn't any of those points. I don't look at it. Because you could have a gap down that's a baby. And you could have a gap down that's huge. And they both could work. And they both could work equally well. So again, uh, traders want, like, they just said, well, just tell me, just tell me if I just put this one moving average on here. Ooh, and then it, it's not like that. It's just not because there's so many different variables. And that's why I prep so early in the morning. Like I get up in the morning at 6 a.m. First thing I do is look at the market. That's my process. Now, whether I rate anything at 6 a.m., 
it depends if I'm going to work out that morning or not. If I work out, I do the ratings when I get back from working out. If I'm not, I'll probably rate stuff while I'm having a cup of coffee. But I spend time. Now, you don't have to spend as much time as I do, but I don't like to rush it. One of the reasons people join my training room and sign up for my options newsletter is they don't want to spend the time prepping in the morning. I do because I know that the more time I spend prepping in the morning doing the rating, trying to figure everything out, looking at all the 26 points, the higher chance of success and the more money I'm going to make on the live day. And usually then I'm only going to trade for a couple of minutes. So, I mean, again, it's not just like plugging it in and saying it's 52% no, because I mean, there's many times, well, things will work all over the place of percentages. It's not just one thing. And again, I don't use, a lot of people use scanners and they stick it in a scanner. I, I don't, you know, I had a scanner years ago when I first started and I felt like that was overlap where you could plug in different things and it could come up with a list of gaps. It, it was an overlap, so I don't even use a scanner, a paid scanner. I, I was a hundred bucks a month and that was like 15 years ago. So I don't even know what scanners cost now, but I don't even use them because they're, it's irrelevant to me because it's not going to help me because even if something's down X, Y, Z percent, I may not like it. So that's the other thing. It may not work at all. You can find gaps anywhere, anywhere. There's tons of gaps all the time. Usually during earnings season, though, is the best time where you're going to get most gaps. Now, it's kind of strange because Martin Luther King Day holiday is Monday. So the stock market's closed, just so you know, January 15th. So it's kind of weird because earnings season starts Friday. It's just the way the month, you know, fared out. Earnings season starts January 12th, which is Friday, the banks report. And then we have the weekend, and then we have a three-day weekend, and then we come back Tuesday, the 16th, and then we have a short week next week, but earnings season then is in full swing. So most stocks gap on earnings season. Now, again, if you watch TV and you like to get different emails from different places, we shorted BA in the last two days, and it worked, but I was actually in BA before the gap down that happened on Monday, but BA had some bad news. If you didn't hear about it, um, they had there. Luckily, no one died. I, I don't even think anyone got hurt. Um, they had some issues and they had to ground some planes and it was, you know, could have been catastrophic. And that came out and happened over the weekend. So from Friday. So this was a news gap. OK, not an earnings gap. But from Friday, the 5th. The stock closed at 249 and then it gap down here in the morning and open at 228. We were already short this stock. In fact, I see Trond, I see you in here. Uh, Trond had gotten the trade. Randy, I don't did Randy, did you do the trade? You should have done the trade, Randy. I see you in here too. Some people in here are doing the options with me if you want if you want to say it. I know Tron made out on it and anybody that did it made out on it. But anyways, long story short, on the third, so this was two, uh, no, this was Wednesday. This was Tuesday. This was Wednesday. I called the 245 BA puts. This is before that crazy, crazy, crazy news came out. So that was Tuesday, first day of the year. Then we had Wednesday, then we had Thursday, then we had Friday, and then this. So this was a trade that people that were on the options newsletter got where the stock dropped, you know, 20 some points through the strike overnight. One of the benefits of doing options is you can capture huge moves overnight where you're ready in the trade. You might be in a call, you might be in a put. Did I know that they were going to have some kind of mechanical issue? No, I had no idea whatsoever at all when I called that trade on January 3rd. I called the train because BA was a good short and it was a good gap. And that's why I called it. But again, you see how you don't even have to know the details of the information because you the price is already telling you the information. Does that make sense? 
So if you follow what you're supposed to follow with the system, you'll be a-okay. And then sometimes things will go in your favor where, where you will get a piggy target, which I consider this a piggy. Um, actually, the biggest target I had in the trade in the, in the letter for the BA was 230. And it was underneath that on the day of the gap down on Monday. Randy, you did it. Randy, I didn't hear from you. Good job, Randy, if you did it. A couple of iPhones flew at the plane door. They found one that still worked. Well, that's still scary. Anyways, it was, it was like a, there was a Twilight Zone episode. I love Twilight Zones. The, the, the Twilight Zone marathon was on New Year's, New Year's Eve weekend. There's that one episode. Of, does anybody like the Twilight Zones? There's that one episode with, with William Shatner. It was like when William Shatner was like starting out his career. Remember, he was on the plane and he saw a like monster on the wing of the plane and he tries to shoot it. And then it and then and then the whole plane, everybody and he starts to get sucked out of the plane. <laughs> does anybody remember that one? That's a good one. Anyways, it was scary, but luckily nobody got hurt. Um, oh, Randy, you didn't do it last week. Oh, shoot. Darn it. Well, anyways, getting back to my whole premise here. If you follow what's happening with the price action and go with that and go with the rating and stick to the strategy, you're going to be fine. And, and one of the things that people get frustrated about, I think, when they're trading is, again, everybody wants everything right now. Yesterday, we live in a very impatient society. Me, me, me. I want it all now. I want to make millions of dollars. If you could go back in time and you could just, you know, go back in a time machine. Again, like there was a Twilight Zone with a time machine. Go back in a time machine in your life, you know five years ago, think of all the things that you would do differently if you knew that you could. And I'm sure if you've been trading, there's trades that you could say, oh my God, I wouldn't do that trade, or I would do that trade, or I, or I would do this, or I wouldn't do that with reference to the market. But we don't, we don't get that chance. We don't get that chance to go back in time machines. But I will say that it is very, very, uh, what's the word? special or exciting or exhilarating, I guess, to get trades like BA, not just because of the money aspect of it, which obviously this was a nice trade, but the fact that it falls into your lap, okay? Because many times people try to push the envelope with their trading. They take too much size, they over trade, they do things that they shouldn't do, pushing the envelope, to get a big profit when in normal, you know, normal daily activity, you should have big profits every now and again if you're just following a normal system. Pushing the envelope, doubling down and things like that and taking trades that you shouldn't be taking is not going to really get you where you want to be. There's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts to it. It's like, it's like if you want to lose weight, it's like, a, like well, well, let's talk about that. The, the Azempic. Everybody is on this Azempic now, this diabetes drug. But people are on it that don't have diabetes to lose weight. It's they want a shortcut. Yes, it's working. Are, are some people having side effects? Absolutely. Is everybody? No. But what are going to be the long-term side effects for some of these people? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And they could have long-term side effects. You understand? So it's like there's there's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts to losing weight, and there's no shortcuts in training to get to that level of success that many people are looking for. It's it's I hate to say it, but it's like it's like a grind. You gotta get up every day and you gotta do it. And you gotta be there and you gotta rate the gap and take the trade and do it. And you could do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And if you happen to do it, poof, you get the BA. And all of a sudden, you make 400, 500% in one trade, and then you're singing and dancing. And you're like, wow, I, this definitely works, and I can see that this works, and I can't wait for the next BA. But you don't control the, when the next BA is. I don't either. Nobody does.
but I know that if I get up and rate the gap, and if I know that I follow the strategy, and if I know that I continue to hone my skill and master my skill at basically shorting, you know, that's what I'm doing, reading the gap and reading the price and shorting, that I will continue to get these types of winners over the course of the month and the year. No, I did not, I didn't, I, I said the stock gap down to 230. That was the target, Joe. That's what I said. I did call some other trades in BA, but I was talking about this trade here in the third. The target was 230. That was the dream target. That wasn't the trade I called here. I called it at the strike, at the money. So that's what I'm telling you. In the newsletter, I have targets, okay? 230 was the maximum target I got, I had in this letter. I, I said this is like a double, I double, triple star uh, targets in the letter. This was one of them. And it, it, it was at 225, 224 in the pre-market in the morning. And then when it opened on the day, it actually opened under 230, dropped and the low of the day was 225.79. But again, what, I don't know what the price of the 230s was here. That would have been a very, very far away. Again, I did the 12th expiration. So technically, actually, you could still be in the trade. I don't, I don't see any reason to still be in that trade. When you get a move like this, you gotta take the profits. Trond, are you here? I said that to you yesterday. But anyways, I have no idea what the 230s cost here. But they, I mean, they were probably under a dollar. But that to, to see on January 3rd that the stock would go to 230 before on or before January 12th, you know, you really almost would have had to be a psychic. I knew it was lower. And I had the target in the letter, but I double, triple starred it. So again, some of you were trading options with me. Some of you are not, and you're thinking about it. If you sign up for the newsletter, I put a double, I put a dream target in every letter. That doesn't mean you should hold the trade to the dream target, but it means there's a possibility that this trade could go to a piggy target. And in this case here, went past it. So Tron, my point to you yesterday, Tron did the trade, Tron made a lot of money. My point was, if I have a piggy target in a newsletter, Tron, and the trade is through the piggy, what do you, why are you asking me where to get out? Get out. Like, do you know what I mean? You, do, you don't think about it. You don't question it. You press the button on the open and poof, you're out. That's my point. You have to book that type of money because, again, that was a dream target. You got out of you got out of the last one today at 1965. Okay, good job. Um, Joe, if you did puts, you did puts in what? BA. Any other questions here? So again, you know, getting back to what I was saying, I'm looking for a specific, specific, specific setup every time I take a trade. Sometimes I'm doing day trades. We did a day trade in BA today. Sometimes I'm doing options. Sometimes I'm doing both. Let's look up the BA day trade. So we did this today. We actually had almost a little of the day exit. Really nice entry here. We shorted BA today. Stock closed here, gap down, rallied. We got in it, got the drop, got out. So this was a day trade. What do I mean by a day trade? This was a trade on margin. You need a margin account in order to do this. Options are not on margin. If you buy a put, you pay the cost of the trade. If it costs three dollars, one would be three bucks, or you buy five or ten or whatever you decide you can afford. If you want to short something like this on margin, 
you need a margin account at a retail broker a four to one margin or you will open up a prop account where you could get 10 to one margin which should be a lot more advantageous in a stock like BA where the cost is you know 200 some dollars a share I do both but when I started out I started out actually day trading I only got into options later and really it was my broker that encouraged me to do options because of the fact that stocks were having these kind of moves overnight that I was day trading so again technically you could have day traded BA today you could have day traded BA yesterday actually we did okay you could have day traded it here I think we did this I think we did the spy this day and you could have done it here too so there's a lot of days in here that you could have had some nice shorts in BA again where we go tomorrow we have to wait and see but for today we did short BA so again part of what I look at doing is the very very quick and fast trades so I'm even doing options fast I'm not doing options out for weeks and weeks and weeks I'm doing the weekly options so again if it's a holiday week I might do something out a week and a half but mostly I'm doing trades that expire Friday of that week in my mind if the trade doesn't go fairly quickly almost immediately in that week then what's the momentum that I'm playing I'm not trend trading when I'm trading in fact we'll go to the market the market's in an uptrend but I shorted the market last week I made money but the market's in an uptrend hold on one second this is loading so I'm not trend trading so I don't want to be in something for two weeks or three weeks or a month or longer you pay up to be in something a long, long time. I want to get the move. I'm trading momentum. We're in, we're out. We take it, get the move, get out. We take it, get the move, get out. That is across the board. Whether it's a day trade, whether it's an option, we're looking to trade momentum. This is taking forever. My internet is slow. Any questions while I'm trying to pull up this spy? So anyways, getting back to what I was saying about the BA. Gosh, this is taking forever. Do I, did I lose internet? Oh, there it is. Um, getting back to what I was saying about the BA. Woo, look at these tails. Lots of tails here today. Um, BA was a gap down, so we shorted it. Okay. So I was talking about the third actually shorted the market here and we made money and we did it and it worked we got in got out boom so again this was january 2nd market closed at 472.65 gap down here open 470.43 we shorted it we got in got out it actually continued down in here the next day on the following day but we did it on the third and again that was a day trade the markets become very expensive to do on margin again you could buy a put there are daily option expirations now which you could day trade options as the daily expirations i'm not doing that again i'm doing the friday weekly expirations but there are in the queues and the spy since the beginning of 2023 daily expirations being offered that's something that if i call the trade in the live room and you want to day trade it you'll pay a much cheaper price than doing the weekly options for uh for something like this instead if you don't want to do the the trade on margin okay anyways consistency is extremely important in order to make a living trading and i'm very consistent with what i do why i only do one strategy the 26 points i use every day to rate the gap to decide what to do 99.99999 percent of the time i consistently short more than I ever go long while I sometimes go long I'm mainly shorting okay so again it's the consistency that's going to help you achieve the results you want of course you have to have a strategy that works one of the things that I find interesting again since I started the stock switch business since I started teaching people my method which is 12 years now 12 years I've had the business is that so many people trade and they don't they don't even have a strategy i might say what's your strategy and they can't give me an answer or if i say what's your strategy they say well i go long on the eight pair moving average that's not a strategy 
Or they say, well, I buy dips. That's not a strategy either. You buy dips in what, where, when? How do you know they're gonna work? You know? So it's, it's, the, it's, a, it's the idea of being so specific that, you're, that you have so many things in your favor, so many, that it's rare that you'll lose. Where you're putting the odds in your favor that you're gonna have way more winners than losers. And then occasionally you will have some big winners like the BA. Um, I was just going to say something here about the market. Oh, we were talking about trend. And again, any questions, let me know. So here's the market. Let's just take a look at it. So the last time the market made a brand new all-time high in the SPY. Oh, let me go back. Any questions from anybody? Oops. 479.98. Let's go see where we were. End of last year. Got really close. 477.55. We didn't make brand new all time highs yet in the SPY, but we could this week if the bank earnings on Friday are good. If the financials go with the SPY, I've said it before and I've said it again, I'll say it again. You won't have the market at new highs without the financials. One of the reasons the market had a difficult point in time in the spring of last year was when banks were going under, regional banks. It affected all banks. But anyways, the market recovered since then in 2023. But if the bank earnings do not report positively in the chart, I'm not talking about what the earnings say. I'm talking about if they gap down and fall or if they gap down at all, the market won't make new highs Friday. So it's a it's a it's a wait and see period here into Friday for the market. How do I determine when to get out of my options trades that I call? Do you have a profit target, 50%, 75%, etc.? That's a good question, DJ. First of all, if you're new and you never did the class before and you decide to sign up, again, the class is at the end of January. If you say, I want to sign up today, Melissa and you sign up and you want to get in and start trading, I would tell you that you didn't do the class yet. You have no idea of anything that we're looking at yet. I would tell you to get out of trades at 50%, okay? Now, I do have chart targets in the newsletter. You could follow them as well, all right? After you do the class, you're gonna learn targets from me. You're also gonna learn exits. You're gonna learn how I exit trades in the class. And so I would say, if you actually can, I don't know if you work full time, if you're retired or what you're doing during the day between 9.30 and 4, but yes, if you can watch trades after the class, after you do it, then I would watch for targets and exit signs that you'll learn in the class. If you're somebody that's busy, even if you do the class and you can't watch anything, I would buy something and this is just, you know, I'm just giving you a tip. Say you pay $3 for something and you get in it, I'd put a sell order at $4.50 or maybe put it at five because you can't watch it or you're in meetings or you're running around town or with the kids and it's a day order. It's a cancel order. It's a limit order. It'll cancel out after four. And if it hits your trade, you'll get out because if you really can't watch what's going on, I have the targets in the letter like I have with BA, then you don't want to miss something being up where you miss your exit. You could get out. You can't be that, uh, concerned about trying to get 100% or whatever if you can't watch what's going on, DJ. Now, as far as the BA, you didn't have to watch anything. I send an email in the morning on Monday. BA is a huge train. If you're in it, look at it. If you got up in the morning Monday and you were in the train, which many people were, some people weren't. Some people weren't. Somebody did the wrong expiration last week. They did the fifth, which I didn't call. They were upset at themselves. They made money in the trade they got out, but they didn't get the move on Monday. Randy said he didn't do it. So, I mean, again, the only way to make money is if you do the trades. But if you get up in the morning and you're in the trade, you don't have to think. That trade was up way more than 100%, so you don't have to worry about targets. You don't have to worry about where to get out. And that was my point to you, Tron. What are you worried about? Get out. It's through every target that I gave you. Don't overthink it. Um, Vivian's asked me about the gap ups in the market. I'm guessing you're talking about the spy here. Again, I will go long. We've done some longs 
and I will go long again. Have I been going long the market recently? The answer is no. Will I change my mind on Friday or next Thursday or whatever? Maybe. But as of right now, no. So that's my two cents. So while I'm not shorting the market every single week, I'm not going long it either. I did not participate in the rally that we had in November, December. In my mind, it was a false rally, but it absolutely worked. And if you went long, then you made money. We did go long stocks, specific stocks in those months. In fact, one of the things we went long was crowd. But looked at this. Let's look at it. I haven't looked at this at all in 2024. Oh, crap. We should have done this today. Look. Wow. <laughs> We went long this. I could have done this today, but we did, we did BA. Woo, look at that. I mean, I, I can't, I can't, I can't get everything, but look there, you could have done it. And look at the, look at the beautiful move that had actually. You could have, this is something we went long. You can see it. We went long this last year at the end of the year, but you could have done it today and you could have done it yesterday. This I would have gone long this year. I forgot about it. Again, if I don't see a short, then I'm looking for a long. I don't look at every single stock that's gapping every single day and do 20,000 things a day. But you could have done this. And we did go long this December, and it worked. And this worked here. Look at that. It's too late to do it now, though. That is that. But no, I didn't go long the market. You can't go long every gap up and you can't go long, every, you can't short every gap down. Now, did some of these gaps rate good? I'd have to go back and rate them. My expectation was we were gonna get a failure in here at some point and we weren't gonna make new highs. I was right about that. We didn't make new highs in the SPY in 2023. We did get close. We did get close. And again, we're so close now. And I said this at the end of 2023, that if we don't make new highs in the next 30 days, and I'm not even gonna say 30 days now, cause I said that a couple of weeks ago, we have to do it like now, cause if we don't, then we won't. In fact, I'm gonna tell you that we gotta do it in the next week, cause if we don't, then we won't, at least not right now. So there you have it, that's my market call. So if it happens on Friday, it happens because of the banks, and if it doesn't happen Friday, Low odds, it happens anytime soon. And that's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem for a lot of people that think the market's gonna keep you know, going higher. One of the things I think it's tricky, going back to Vivian's question is, again, I don't trade the same stocks every day. Like again, yeah, we did BA today, and yeah, we did BA yesterday, but I'm not gonna do BA, you know, every day for the next two weeks like i get up and i'm looking for what's gapping it just so happens that we had ba the last two days remember earnings season doesn't start till friday we haven't had a lot of gaps this week where i'm happy we have the ba because i you know people were on vacation last week or just getting back the market volume also has been crazy low i mean i know that we rallied today and i know that we rallied yesterday But this is just crap volume for the market, people. Today and yesterday, this is, we're rallying here on bupkis, to be honest with you. Fact to prove my point. Let's see if I can find. NVIDIA had more volume than the market, than the overall market today. That's really not normal. <laughs> NVIDIA is another one you could have gone long yesterday. So we've had a rally the last two days, but it's really low volume. So NVIDIA, one stock, one specific stock, had more, more volume today than the overall market. That's not good for the market. And people are back this week. People are trading this week. Any other questions here? Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, 12 years of teaching people and seeing what people do, so many people 
you know, I want to say people don't size themselves right because they tend to oversize themselves, thinking a trade's going to go and work, and then it, and then it, then it doesn't work, and then they kill it, and then the trade goes on to work anyways, and they lost it a trade that it goes on to work anyways, but they had too much size, so they killed it. Um, wow, this went up again today. Look at that. This almost went to 550. That's pretty crazy. It's pretty nuts. But anyways, you could have gone long this yesterday and today. But anyways, you, so many people, you know, are all over the place with their sizing, but it's really just because they want to get some big trade. You know, the big trades aren't going to come by oversizing yourself. And again, you're more likely than to kill a trade that may be a very good trade because you're scared because your sizing's too big and not hold it or end up losing far too much in a trade where you have to do five trades just to come back to break even from your sizing. So people have, a, have an issue with sizing. They're all over the place with sizing, mostly because they just want a big trade, not because they really believe in the trade. So most people, when they screw up their sizing, it's not because, oh my God, they love this trade, they love it, love it, love it. It's like because they just want a big trade. You can't force a big trade to happen if it's gonna happen. Again, 99% of the time, it's not planned that something goes to a biggie target. If you're taking the right actions every single day, just like if you're on a diet and you're following it and you're exercising every single day, you're gonna lose weight. It's just gonna naturally happen over time. And again, naturally you will get the big one to the piggy like the BA, but you gotta be in the trade to get it. But I just think people in general don't have any set strategy that they follow on a continuous basis and nowhere near as long as I've been doing what I've been doing. Cause again, I started trading in 2008 and that's when I started doing gaps. So, I mean, I've done nothing but gaps and made a career out of only doing gaps and mostly shorting. Again, sometimes I'll go long, but I'm mostly short. But because I can see shorts so well, I can see the longs. I just pointed out too. I mean, crowd, I could have watched that. I could have done it. I mean, you could be in crowding your retirement account. Crowd looks great. Crowd's higher, but I'm not doing that as a, as a momentum trade because the move already happened now. I didn't get it for this last two days. Nvidia has been up significantly for the past week. What would you look for to short it? I have no idea why you'd be one to short Nvidia right now, Joe. Nvidia is not a short. You shouldn't be looking at shorting Nvidia. I'm confused why you would ask that. What's again, what's your strategy? NVIDIA just had a monster move the last 48 hours. Why on the planet Earth would you want to short it? And if you want to short something, you would not be looking to short this. What's the strategy? As it keeps hitting all-time highs, why would you want to short a stock that's hitting all-time highs? Why would you think you were going to make money doing that? That is ass backwards. <laughs> I mean, we should have gone long this. I didn't do it. And again, I talked about it in the room yesterday. I said, oh, I think this is too late. At the time I said that, it was at 510, 512. And then today it went up almost to 545. You're crazy if you short this. No. I thought it was going to drop last week. It didn't. The market fell last week. This dropped a little. The market flipped the last two days. And I think that's actually one of the reasons why that uh, the market actually rallied was NVIDIA because this is considered a market stock. But if your strategy is to short stocks at brand new all-time highs, Joe, that is a losing strategy. I got to be honest with you. There's something else I was going to say. Oh, we were talking about the focus. Oh, you know what else I wanted to look at? Nike. See how this closed today. Didn't do much of anything there. Anyways, if you want to make money in the market, you have to have a strategy that works. I mean, when I say works, I mean it has more winners than losers. You got to get your sizing right too. Okay. You can't be all over the place with your sizing. You can't risk a thousand dollars in one trade, five thousand in another. You also can't kill trades for no reason. You want to kill it, it that, you know, why? Either Then you shouldn't have taken it, maybe. So, again, you put in the stop. So, again, BA, we had the stop. 
I got out of it. I was up money today before it stopped out. But anyways, you got to put a stop in because if you don't put a stop in, you have unlimited risk. I'm talking about day trades. If you're doing options, my risk is my stop. So because I can't lose more than I risk. So again, BA worked in our favor. What if it didn't? If you had risked $2,500 in the BA puts on January 3rd, and if it had gapped up on Monday morning to 300, it would never make it back in time for the 245 puts to be positive by the 12th if it had done that on Monday, which it didn't. But the most you would have lost is $2,500. So again, options to me, the risk is the stop, and you're better off letting things play out. You let things play out to their natural conclusion basically win or lose. And that's how I look at options. But again, you have to set your risk accordingly. So going back to what I was saying, a lot of traders, when they trade, they're all over the place with the choices that they're making, or they don't have a applicable strategy that they use on a daily basis, or they say that something is a strategy when it really isn't at all, and they're also all over the place with their risk. When it's, I wish I could say trading is so easy that you can just go along everything in an uptrend and short everything in a downtrend or vice versa, but it's just not that way. And you're going to see that with the market. I mean, mark my words. So again, let's just lay out the scenario that the mark, that the banks report and gap up and fly high on Friday and the market makes new highs and everything looks great. It's not going to last might last for a little bit, but it's not going to last. Then people want to buy every dip and buy every pullback, and that's not going to work either. What if we crash Friday? What if all the banks are down? Blah, 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 blah. And then we fall. Again, people could buy a gap down in the market on Friday. They could buy the dip. They could buy the support. They could say, oh, this isn't going to last. Boo! And they say, we're in an uptrend. We're going to go long. And then we fall, fall off a planet, and then those people lose. So again, the market isn't an uptrend. There's no denying that. But we're not going to have a power trend this year. And we actually didn't last year. November was bullish and December was bullish. Vivian was right about that. I didn't participate. But we did short the market in the fall of 2023. And we had a lot of nice shorts, and they worked, and they continued, and they followed through. Then I laid off. But I didn't go long. My expectation was we would have a sell-off. It didn't come, but I didn't, I didn't lose. I just never got the setup. We did other things, and that was that. For options, you said your risk is your stop loss. So let's say you risk $1,000 per trade and don't have a stop loss. No, you have a stop. Your stop is the $1,000 you risk. You're, you can't lose more than that, DJ. But you take your profit at 50 percent is that a good risk strategy i think you're saying if you risk a thousand a thousand a thousand and you get out of every trade at 50 percent and then you're going to have some losers you're saying are you going to make money i'm trying to read your mind here but i think that's what you're asking me dj i'm talking to you and anybody else with this questions if you want to write it DJ, I think that that's fine for you, as I was saying earlier, if you're new. Yes, I think that's fine for you if you're new. Do I think that you should get out of every trade at 50% from now until the end of time if you join? No. No, I think you, like I said, I gave six things at the, when I started talking today. What the fifth thing was to master your skill. At some point... I'm not saying it has to be like right away. And again, Trond is new. So he's asking me a lot of questions because he's new. At some point, you have to develop the skill set where you say, I love this. I absolutely love this. I know this is going to go. I'm holding this to 100%. And you will hold them. And you got to learn that. And you, you're going to have it's you have to learn it. So no, I think at the beginning, yes, that's fine. I think after you do the class, you're going to learn a lot more. And then you'll be fine holding some things past 50%. But I think you've got to master the skill set. And if you just want to join the options newsletter and you don't want to do the class and you don't want to learn it 
it's going to take you longer because you're going to have to watch what we're doing. I still at the beginning would get out at 50% and you still should be okay because every once in a while you're going to get a trade like BA and you're just going to get it and you didn't even have to think about it and then you're going to make a lot of money in it. But I think that's fine at the beginning, but you have to learn the skill. And not only do you have to learn the skills that I have, you have to master them too. And how long that's going to take you, I have no idea. Because I don't know you. And everybody's different. And everyone is different. And that's a fact. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I could say blah, 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 blah. But I don't know what you know. And a lot of people have bad habits. In fact, some people's habits are so bad that they really shouldn't even be trading. Because their habits are so bad that they're just digging themselves a deeper hole. And it's a hole that they will have a hard time getting themselves out of. And, and again, I've been teaching for so long now that I have people following me for so long that, that they've done so many other classes because they didn't want to pay the money for my class because my class is seventy four ninety nine. They, 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 they've done, they probably spent 10 times the amount of money in classes and losses or more than that over the 12 years they've been following me because they didn't want to pay the money for my class. And they've dug themselves such a hole in trading losses that they have a hard time then deciding to finally plop down the money for my class, which they should have done five years ago. It's, you know, it's, it's once you, it's like a, it's like a credit card. You know, you get, you like, this is again, a, you know, I'm giving away my age here, but like back when I started out, I started out as a teller in banking. I started out as a teller and then it was a customer service rep. And then I was an assistant manager and then I was a manager and then I did loans and then I did mortgages. You know, I used to lend money to people, you know, and we, we had credit cards at the bank and then I was basically acting like a underwriter and looking at people's credit reports and, looking at people's balances and then back in the day i mean i'm talking 25 30 years ago credit was so so easy to get and you know depending on your age you know that i'm right i mean people were getting unsecured lines of credit we, we were we were giving them we were giving them at the bank i was giving small business loans we were we were giving unsecured lines of credits to the tune of fifty thousand, a hundred thousand credit cards too that's unheard of now absolutely unheard of so again it's just like with anything else sometimes what happens is people dig themselves such a hole that the only way to get out of it is to, to is to just dig yourself up out of it there's no there's no other way out of it and 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 it's not an easy decision for people but unfortunately that's what it is so you're not going to dig yourself out of a trading hole by risking too much money. You're just going to dig the hole deeper down into the earth. And you're not going to make it any easier by paying for cheap classes and taking bad trades on top of that then and losing more. The only way to dig yourself out of the hole is to dig up out of the hole. It's the same thing with credit cards. It's like you got to just chip away at it. Chip it, chip it, chip it. But again, people don't want to hear that answer. You know, if I, if I called trades like BA every day, you know, everybody would be thrilled. But I mean, the last two days proves the point. There were people that even screwed up this trade. You know, they screwed up the expiration date or they didn't take it or they killed it Friday, actually, because it was down. Friday, the trade was down. And some people killed it with a loss. And, and the trade was huge on Monday. So no matter how you look at it, DJ, the only way you're really going to get somewhere is eventually mastering the skill set and learning it. It's just there's no two ways about it. But you can tippy toe at the beginning. And that's why people like to follow me taking the trades. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to, you can ask me questions. What do I think about this? What do I think about that? What do I think about this? Tron asked me what I thought about BA. I said, get the hell out. Yesterday is what I said. 
he he stayed in one extra contract. He did okay. He got out today. He made money, but that was that was chance in it because it was a great trade yesterday. Trond, are you there? Any other questions before I think there was anything else I want to say? Sometimes you can get so caught up into doing, uh, so sometimes you can get so caught up into um, trying to say it was pure luck. And it wasn't luck. We sold off yesterday into the close. That was, you emailed me in the morning. We sold up into the clothes that was good yesterday, Tron. But I'm just telling you, get in a habit. When you see something through the master target like that, just get in the habit of not overthinking it and get out. It was a good close yesterday for the BA to continue lower, you know, which it did today. Um, anyway, so many people, we're, we're, we're habitual people as, as human beings. We are. We we're, we're do things as far as habits. We're very big on habits. But again, at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes we have habits that aren't good. Like everyone's talking about dry January. People don't, you know, people want to not drink in January. Well, that's really hard for people if you're watching football every Sunday, the Super Bowl's coming up, you know, there's holiday parties, you know. So, I mean, habits are hard to break and that's just human nature. And it's the same way with trading, but it is up to us to break those habits if we have bad habits. The first step is to recognize that you have a bad habit that isn't really serving your highest good. It may be serving something for you. It may be giving you a reason to complain or tell yourself that you're not successful or, you know, whine to your friends that are other traders. Well, this really sucked today. The market screwed us, whatever. It's that's not going to get you where you want to be. When you get to the point when you're really, 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 really successful, you, you may have a lot less friends than you do right now. There's a lot fewer people at the top than there are at the bottom. And it will always be that way. So you really have to decide how committed you are to doing it. And again, this is, it's, a, it's an independent activity. You know, one of the reasons I block off the comments and everything is a room then is because I'm in charge. I have to be the one in charge. I'm in charge. I'm the one that knows what, what's going on. I'm the one that's invented the system in the first place. I'm the one that's, you know, calling the trains better than anybody else. So again, if you want to be like me, you learn what I know, but you absolutely have to master the skill. And DJ, if you're new and you're like, I just want to make money, that's fine at the beginning. But eventually you have to say, well, I really want to get good at this. And what am I going to have to do to make that happen? Well, we kind of went off topic today, but I think it was a good discussion. Any other questions? Randy, I haven't talked to you for, I feel like, a while. Why didn't you do the BA last week? Or did you do it and kill it? I'm not talking about this week. I'm talking about last week. Were you not trading last week? Or I forget if you were in the room. Vivian, I know you've been following me for a bit. Do you have any other questions? Randy, are you there? Hello. Remember, earnings season starts Friday. You don't remember why you didn't do it. Oh, shoot. Well, one thing going forward, Randy, you should say to yourself is, again, how many trades do I want to do a week? And again, I'm talking about options trades too. 
maybe like hone it down for yourself. I'm going to do this many on a Monday or this many per week. or I'm going to be in this many things at a, at a time. Cause I, cause we, it was a slow week at the beginning of the week. So I, you could have done it. I called that early on. So maybe going forward, you say, okay, I'm going to do five trades a week or six trades a week or whatever and kind of pace yourself because you don't want to miss the next one. Do you know what I mean? Like make up your mind how many trades you want to do a week and how many do you want to be in at one time? You say, well, I'm not going to be in any more than three at a time or something, but you could have done the BA then. You know what I mean? And definitely make sure you don't miss the earning season trades. All right, very good. Anyone has any questions or if you're interested in the class, email me at Melissa at the stockswoosh.com. Do good tomorrow, everybody. And then we'll talk to you later.